liturgy? Are you the liturgist? Is he the liturgist? Okay. Good morning. Very good. I'm still getting my thoughts together. You know, county uh, I is a little slower than I thought it would be today. So trying to get on 42 and making that left turn is a little bit more difficult. I'm Bruce Fenner, and I uh, retired clergy of the United Methodist Church Wisconsin Conference. Some of you know me. If you don't, that's too bad. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. I guess we have a, there's a, I know we have one announcement. Is there a mission moment too? Okay. Ken, why don't you start? Here's the, you're the mission moment? Pardon? Are you the mission moment too? No, I just have one announcement. Okay. Yeah. I just, uh, the men's club announcement didn't make it in print this morning. So I just re want to remind you, men, you're available next Sunday after worship at about 11 10, bring your coffee across the hall to the Sunday school room. We want to have a pre-game huddle and to figure out who's going to play quarterback next week for the Packers. <laughs> but, but we'll also just think about some ends club things and just kind of get the ball rolling. A brief meeting and get you home all in time for the Packers game. Uh, but just, you know, to look at each other again, it's that time of the year and uh, 
to maybe set a few dates, okay? Next Sunday after worship. Men, you have a 90-second nap. Ladies, listen up, please. <laughs> I have a couple posters on the doors back there and back by Cafe Joy. Next Saturday morning at 8.30, there's going to be a small women's retreat over at Friends Church. Um, some of you know it as the Old Rugged Cross Church on Maple Street. The flyers tell you all about it. It's from 8.30 to 12.30. And the title is Be Still. I don't know about you, but sometimes <laughs> I see some heads shaking like, I don't be still. But then there's other times people, you know, look at me and say, come on, get going. So Pastor Dave's been sharing with us how important it is to be still sometimes, though, before God and to figure out what's going on in our lives and to listen to God. I do believe this is what it's all about. If you got any more questions, please ask me. I'll be happy to tell you more in Cafe Joy afterwards. Time to wake up, men. Let's stand for the call to worship. God has been acting in our lives and in the world around us this past week. God is here, ready to strengthen us and to urge us to greater faithfulness. Fill us with your goodness, O God. Draw us into the orbit of your activity in the world that we might fulfill the purpose for which you have created us. Amen. Come and find the quiet center. Number 2128, in the faith we sing.
be seated. And let us join together in our prayer of confession as it's printed in the bulletin. O oh God, we confess that we have not acknowledged you as the source of our successes, our substance, ourselves. We have been far more ready to complain when things go wrong than to praise when all is well. We have fed our bodies with a rich diet while neglecting to feed our souls. Power and wealth have assumed greater importance to us than sensitivity and service. We have allowed religious words and forms to substitute for living encounters with the persons you have called us to love. Forgive us, compassionate creator, and grant us opportunity to start over again in this new week. Keep us from repeating the mistakes of the past or from new evils that could mislead or destroy. In the name of Christ, we offer our earnest prayers for pardon and deliverance. Amen. We come now to that time in our worship when we can offer our prayers to God. But before we do so, what joys, what concerns do you have today? Uh, yes. So we'll keep Al in our prayers today, okay? Thank you. We also had a notice on uh, this week that um, Miriam Erickson uh, and her family need to be held in our prayers. So please keep Miriam in your thoughts, but also the family. In addition to that, we've had a couple of major tragedies in the life of our nation this week with the school shootings in Appalachia and also Jabba Town, Maryland. Keep those communities, those families in your prayers today and this week. And last evening, as some of you may know, there was another shooting on I-75 just outside of London, Kentucky, where nine vehicles were struck by some shooter. 
and many injuries of, as a result of that. No deaths in that at this point, but keep all of those concerns as a part of your prayer life this morning. And then on these moments of silence, I ask you to name whatever those thoughts are that are close to your heart and lift them in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come here today in fellowship with one another, setting aside this time solely for you to offer you praise and worship, to hear you speak to us, and to leave here this morning a little bit more into the likeness of your son, Jesus. And so we come humble and quietly before you praying. Lord, we thank you for those times this week where we smiled and laughed, those times of friendship enjoyed, of meals shared, of those times when we appreciated the beauty of nature, when we felt peace in our heart, when we paused to be grateful for the life you have given us. For all of these and so much more, we know that we are blessed people. O oh God, for our days of difficulty and struggle, for the times when we have been less than our best, we give you thanks that you do not turn away from us and that we are never, ever alone. Your holy word tells us that when we confess our sins, you are gracious, you are just in forgiving us, and you help us start anew. Holy One, we lift to you our church. We want to be a strong and vital church on, in our community. We want to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. The need for hope, acceptance, love, and compassion is great, and you are the answer to those needs. Help us to show others the way to you through our programs, through our ministries, and most of all, through our lives and example. We lift to you our country and the leaders in our global community. We pray for change. A change that brings peace and justice, well-being for hurting and disenfranchised communities. We pray that egos and power plays be set aside and that wisdom and vision and collaboration will prevail. For you are sorely needed, O oh God. Lord, for those who are sick, those who are suffering, those who are misguided or just in need of your presence, we ask that you touch them with healing with your guidance, with your peace. Lord, for the confidence and joy and hope we have because we walk daily with you, we give you thanks and praise in the name of your Son who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 4.
confident plea for deliverance from enemies, a psalm of David. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. And from the New Testament, from Acts 3, 1 through 10, we read about how Peter heals a crippled beggar. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. I'm going to give you a quarter. Now, how much is a quarter worth? You know, 25 cents. Can you buy much with a quarter? No. <laughs> I'm going to give you another. Would you like something more than a quarter? I'm going to make a deal with you. I'll let you choose any one of these cups, but first, you've got to give me that quarter back. You're willing to do that. What cup would you like? Number two. $20 bill. Oh, my goodness sakes. Now, that is a really good deal. Now... I wonder if there's something better than that under either of these two cups. Now, would you like to trade that $20 bill to have a chance to pick what's in either of these cups? <laughs> Can I say that another way? Can I entice you? Well, that's good. If, I, if you were to trade that to me, what cup would you have chosen? Three. You ready to see what you would have received? A dollar bill. 
oh my God, well, certainly $20 is better than a quarter and $20 is better than one. Are you sure you don't, you know, there might be something really, really good under number one. You want to try and trade that for number one? You do. Nothing. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness sakes. Well, certainly, you learned a lesson. You played <laughs> Let's Make a Deal. And so when you see that show on TV, because it's still on. But anyway, this does tie into our scripture today. You see, we just learned about a man who was lame since birth. And he was at the temple praying and asking for people to give him money every day. And when Peter and John came to him, he held out his hand thinking that they would give him some money. But they said, we don't have any money. And you can imagine what his face looked like when they had nothing to give him. So, what did they do? Peter said, well, I don't have any money, but what I have... I'll give to you in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And at that point, he took him by the hand and he helped him stand up. And while the beggar still thought that's not enough, he at least now had some hope. He had the equivalent of a dollar. But then Jesus said, now walk. And when he walked, lame man got something better than anything else he went he was healed and that was the gift that he gave he came to the temple wanting one thing and he left want getting something far better and that's your experience of the story did you enjoy that i bet you want that 20 back don't you <laughs> all right so i want to tell you something about prayer you know, oftentimes when we pray, we ask for something specific. Sometimes I remember praying, I said, God, I need a good grade. Or sometimes if I could just have enough money to buy that new bike. And sometimes I'm very specific in my prayer. But oftentimes those prayers aren't answered. It's okay to ask for God uh, for things, but you know, God wants to give us something that is the best and that's what we need to remember. God wants to give everyone, look at everybody out here. God wants to give everybody in this room the best and not just be limited by a specific thing because God has an understanding of something we need more than what we think we need. And that's what the lesson is all about today. Thanks for coming up and being a part of this with me. I want you to take, this is, this is kind of a story about today's lesson. You can have that. You can fill it out. You can listen to me or not listen to me. I won't give you the 20 back, but no matter what, you got that today to work on, okay? Thanks for coming up, and I'll see you later, okay? Next time, okay? Now, it's a question for you. And a tune got in my head. And that's the tune that's in your bulletin. I've not been able to shake that. I have had that thing bouncing back and forth. And I remember when I got it. It was probably back in vacation Bible school. You remember that? So we're going to sing that because no matter what else I say today, I want that tune to be stuck in your head. <laughs> okay? And so that when you leave, you always be singing this tune. Okay, so turn in the bulletin to it. The words are there, and we're going to sing this together. All right? Peter and John went to pray. They met a lame man on the way. He asked for alms, and he held out his palms. And this is what Peter did say. 
silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He went walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk he went walking and leaping and praising God walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk Let's pray. O oh Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your spirit, that as we reflect upon your word, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Recently, I heard a story about a boy and his dog that leads us really well into today's lesson. When the boy was eight years old, his prized possession was his dog, a collie, and the dog's name was none other than Lassie. He said, Lassie was my shadow. She ran alongside me as I pedaled around the neighborhood in my bike. She slept outside the door of my one-room fort with my friend Johnny, making sure we were protected. She protected me from dangerous strangers like the mailman, the paper boy, the trash collector. When the veterinarian told us that Lassie had an incurable skin disease and needed to be put to sleep, I was devastated. And even though she was my dog, my dad was almost as heartbroken as me. He could not bring himself to purposely end Lassie's life. And so he drove her out to an old farmhouse about 15 miles away. And there he found an old farmer willing to take her in. I didn't ask for the particulars. I didn't have the particulars. I didn't know if he was a nice old man. I didn't know if dad paid him or not. I didn't know if the, father, if the farmer had children. All I knew was that dad had done the very best that he could. Months later, dad went by to check on the old girl. And the farmer said, I'm sorry, Mr. Edwards, but Lassie ran away a few days after you left her. We've never seen her since. Dad never told me Lassie had run away. But each time Dad drove into town, he scanned the horizon looking for a collie that might be wandering around. And miraculously, one day, he spotted a collie wandering around the street. Dad jumped out of the car, pulled the pipe out of his mouth, and called up, Lassie, come here, girl, come here. And as he clapped his hands together, Lassie ran, jumped on Dad. <coughs> Bear with me. Giving Dad all kinds of kisses and nearly dumping Dad off of his feet. What a surprise that evening when Dad and Lassie drove into the yard. 
Lassie, Lassie, I cried. I had never seen such a welcome sight. As a matter of fact, as I petted her, I noted that her skin disease was all gone. She had fluffy fur, more beautiful than ever. All was well with the world. Two weeks later, my older brother was out playing with Lassie. Dazed and ashen faced, he stumbled through the door. Mom, he said, we've got a big problem. You know, Lassie, well, she's not a Lassie at all, she's a laddie. Mom, we got a problem. We ran outside. We rolled Lassie on to Lassie's back. And certainly, Lassie was not a girl. Lassie was a boy. Needless to say, we put ads in the newspaper. But no one ever claimed Lassie. He seemed perfectly content at our home, and so there he stayed. Have you ever wanted something so badly, hunted and searched and maybe even prayed? And then when you found it, you realize that maybe it wasn't exactly what you wanted, but it was definitely what you needed. Think about that a moment. All through the Bible, we see God answering prayer in unexpected ways. The Israelite slaves in Egypt prayed for deliverance, and God sent them a stuttering old man named Moses. Samuel prayed for a new king but sent Jesse or, or Samuel to Jesse's house to anoint a young boy named David. The Hebrew nation prayed for a savior, and God answered them with a baby's cry in a Bethlehem stable. The story in Acts 3 is another one of those stories in which we hear God answering prayer in a different way than expected. Peter and John are on their way to the temple to pray. And on their way there, they encounter that lame, crippled man, lame since birth, asking for money. He was there every single day. And people gave him money every single day. But look what happened when Peter and John came. They looked him straight in the eye, and they asked the beggar to really look at them. And you can imagine how excited that beggar must have been because nobody had ever looked at them him that way. He probably was expecting a big donation, $20. You're still with me? But then Peter said, I got nothing to give you. And now you can just feel the crush happening to him. Then Peter said, silver, and gold have I none, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he grabbed that guy's hand, pulled him up, and they went leaping and singing and praising God. 
You see, that poor lame beggar was asking for one thing that day. Hoping for one thing that day. Enough to make it through financially to the next. And he got wound up with something far, far better. And he became the happiest guy in the world as he sang and leaped and praised God. And I think there is a message in that for all of us in this room today. There's a motivational speaker who has written lots of bestseller books, and one of the books, one of the stories he tells caught my eye. He tells a story about how years before he and his wife had gathered his kids into the living room and said, we know it's important that you go to college, but we're not going to fund your college. What we need you to do is that we need you to raise your own college fund. So this is what we'll do. For every dollar you raise working during the summer or for every dollar you raise working after school, we will contribute $3 to that $1 for your college fund. Or you might determine that you're just going to study hard and get that scholarship. Or you might decide, well, I'm going to get a college loan, and I'll pay that off later. But now, can you imagine what those kids were beginning to think? Because now their friends, their friends, their parents were saying, we're going to underwrite that college. It's important that we do that. But they, the, the friends, they were a little jealous of the friends that they didn't have to work in order to get that money for school. Years later, they began to realize that investment that they had made in themselves really began to take on a lot more worth. You see, they, they owned that investment themselves. They owned that I had done something and that education was important. It just wasn't given to me. They received a gift far more valuable by what, the, what those parents did than what they could have imagined when they were first told that decision. Now, Robert Schuller, the late Robert Schuller, had a great statement about prayer. And theologically, I'm not always quite in step with Robert Schuller, but I love what he said about prayer. And I'm going to share that with you, and hopefully you can kind of take that home with you today. He says, If what you pray for is not right, and you are not right, and the time is not right, the answer to prayer is no. If what you pray for is right, and the time is not right, and you're not right, the answer to prayer is grow. If what you pray for is right, and you're right, but the time is not right, the answer to prayer is slow. And if what you pray for is right and the time is right and you're right, the answer to prayer is go. Now each of these four responses are answered prayer. For you see, not every answered prayer is a prayer that says go to us. And not every answered prayer is a prayer that gives us what we need right now. And that's because sometimes God wants to give us something far better than what we ourselves have been craving and desiring on the surface. 
So the next time you pray, and I hope you pray this week, I want you to pray this week, and if God says no to you, don't let that disappointment grow too big in your heart. And the next time God says to you, slow or grow, don't take that as a sign that God doesn't love you or that God's not looking out for you or that God doesn't care about you. Always, always remember that sometimes God has something far better in store for any of us than we begin to imagine at this time. One of my favorite hymns, we're going to sing it in just a few moments, but one of my favorite hymns is Be Still My Soul. Be still my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide in every change. He will faithful remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. All of us in this room have disappointments in our lives. You do, I do, we all do. But as Christians, we never let those disappointments go, get too far out of hand, and why not? Because we believe that God really does care about each of us. And that God really does have something in store for all of us. It's greater than we can begin to imagine or grasp at this time. And we also believe this. That through thorny ways, and every one of us is going to have thorny ways in our life. Through thorny ways, God always leads us to a joyful end. And it is with that simple faith that we live day by day, week by week, year by year. God wants to give us the best. Can you claim it? Amen. And amen. Be still my soul. Let's stand as we sing.
may be seated. So we're doing the offering collection. Do we have ushers? Okay. For those of you, are we doing, so it's in the back, in the back. Thank you. So if you have an offering to give, and I hope you all do have an offering to give because all of us have been blessed and, and we're, we're called to give of our gifts, our tithes, our time, and the love of our lives. And there's a collection box in the very back of the church that, that is there designated for you to, to offer that. So in response to that, I am trusting that you are giving your best to God because God's giving you his best to you. And with that, let's just sing the doxology. Gracious God, you have blessed us with so many things in life, the, our life itself, the bounties that we have in, in our stores. And so we stand here today offering the gifts, but our lives to you. Use them to your glory. In Christ's name, amen. Our closing hymn is number 664, sent by, forth by God's blessing.